Hello and welcome to this episode of Danny's Tips. Today you'll learn a new way to boost the colors of your landscape photos. This technique is 40 times when the vibrance or saturation adjustments aren't good enough. You'll learn how to increase the saturation with the channel mixer and then use vibrancy masking to control whether you want it to affect the vibrant or non-vibrant areas. This technique works amazingly well for landscapes and it's great when you want to get the most intense and vibrant colors you can from your photo. Before we start, the quick way to do vibrancy masking is to simply increase the saturation and then lower the vibrance. This will increase the vibrancy of your photo while keeping the neutral areas neutral. This technique is good if you only have Lightroom or if you don't have a lot of time and you think it's good enough. But if you want something that will give you more intense colors and flexibility, then keep watching this tutorial and you'll learn how to do it in Photoshop with the channel mixer. There are several adjustments in Photoshop which can increase the vibrancy of your photo. You can use the vibrance or saturation adjustments. There's also one way and that is with the channel mixer. It gives you really nice intense colors that work great for landscape photos. It's sort of a mix between the old saturation adjustment and a new vibrance adjustment in that it alters both the saturation and lightness like the vibrance adjustment, but it treats all colors equally like the old saturation adjustment. The vibrance adjustment applies different intensity depending on the hue and lightness. But when we're doing something like vibrancy masking, we want something that is straightforward and treats all colors equally. And the channel mixer does this job perfectly. Here's how to do it. Start by going to the adjustments panel and adding a channel mixer adjustment layer. If you don't see this panel, you can open it by going to Window, Adjustments. The channel mixer lets you mix in parts of one channel onto another channel. In case you don't know what channels are, color photos are made from three channels. A red, green, and blue channel that when combined forms a color photo. So for example, if we select the red channel from the drop down menu and set the red to 0 and blue to 100, your red channel will look exactly the same as your blue channel. And this is because we told Photoshop to make the red channel 0% red, 0% green, and 100% blue. You can play around with the percentages, but whatever number you use, you generally want to have them all add up to 100%. So that's what the channel mixer is doing. But how do we use it to make your photo more vivid? Here's how to do it. Start with the red channel, set the red to 200, green to minus 50, and blue to minus 50. This tells Photoshop to regenerate the channel using 200% of the data from the red channel, minus 50% from the green channel, and minus another 50% from the blue channel. We're going to repeat this for the green and blue channels. So go into the green channel and apply the same pattern of settings. Set the green to 200 and the rest to minus 50. Do this one more time for the blue channel. So 200 for the blues and minus 50 for the rest. Now you can see that this layer has made your photo more vibrant. Before we move on, I recommend saving this as a preset for future use. And you can do so by clicking on the panel menu and selecting save preset. Once saved, you can access it from the presets drop down menu anytime you like. And there you go. You just increase the saturation using the channel mixer. Right now, the channel mixer is affecting the entire image, and although the colors are really popping in the foliage, it's also making the stone wall look quite orange and dirty. To fix this, we can add a layer mask based on the vibrancy. Here's how to do it. Change the blending mode of this layer to Difference. This will show you the difference between your current layer and the layers below. And as you can see, the bright spots are the areas where the most vibrant colors are, and the dark spots are where the neutral colors are. To create a vibrancy mask, we can simply use the image as the layer mask. To do this, select the layer mask in your layers panel, and then go to Image, Apply Image. This tool lets you place an image onto your current layer or layer mask. The default settings are fine and you can just click OK. Change the blending mode of this layer back to normal and then hold the Alt or Option key and then click on the layer mask. This will let you see what your layer mask looks like. Right now it's pretty dark so press Ctrl or Command Shift L and that will apply auto levels to balance things out. Hold Alt or Option and then click on the layer mask again to stop looking at your layer mask. And if you hold the Shift key while clicking on the layer mask, you can enable or disable it to preview how it looks. Here's how the image looks like before and after. As you can see, the vibrancy mask really helps to preserve the neutral colors. You can also use the Levels tool on the layer mask by pressing Ctrl or Command L. 
and dragging the outer nodes towards the center, which will increase the contrast like this. If there are any gaps that you want to fill, you can use a brush tool and paint inside the mask with either black or white. If you want the opposite effect, you can invert the layer mask by pressing the invert button in the properties panel, or by pressing Ctrl or Command I. This will make your layer mask affect the neutral colors more than the vibrant colors, and it's useful when you want to increase the vibrancy very evenly with a flatter look and prevent colors from being oversaturated. By the way, if you're using Photoshop CC and you want to blur the layer mask, make sure that you're using the feather setting in the properties panel and not the Gaussian blur filter. Because once you blur the layer mask with the filter, you can't unblur it. With the feather setting, it'll let you adjust the blur as many times as you like, anytime you want, and it's also much easier to access. We're done! You can lower the layer opacity to control how much vibrance you want to add. Here's how the image looks like before and after. Here are some more examples of what you can achieve with this technique. I know that some people really like to pump the vibrance and saturation to get that intense vivid look. I've seen gallery prints like this and they look great in real life. But something that I noticed was that if you keep parts of your photo grey or neutral, like the stones, rocks, etc. If you keep the grey stuff grey, it will make the colors around it look even more vibrant. So hopefully with this technique, you can still get those intense vivid colors, but in a way that's a little bit more natural. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please remember to hit the like button. Now I gotta admit, I don't use this technique all of the time. Most of the time, the vibrance and saturation, they're good enough. Uh, if your photo has very consistent vibrancy, you're not going to notice that big of a difference. If your photo has very vibrant and colorful areas on one side and the opposite on the other, then you're going to notice a huge difference. So it depends on the photo that you're working on. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comments, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you again next week.